First on Fox tonight, we hear directly from the alleged victim in the Vanderbilt rape case for the very first time. In a police report obtained by Fox 17 News, the young woman says she had consensual sex with football recruit Brandon Vandenberg, with whom she was dating, within 24 hours of what Metro prosecutors say was a dorm room sexual assault. Then days later, surveillance footage and cell phone pictures would lead to rape charges against Vandenberg and three other Vandy football players. Fox 17's Erica Lathan has the exclusive story tonight of what happened that night. They got five football players kicked off the team. What have you learned, Erica? Well, that's right, Scott and Stacy. You'll remember, of course, this is the uh, the situation that basically turned the Vanderbilt football program upside down and led to the dismissal of those football players. Tonight, we have the report from the alleged victim, the comments she made to police saying that basically uh, this followed a night of heavy drinking and days later, she didn't have a lot of memory about what happened, but she felt certain that Brandon Vandenberg wouldn't let anything happen to her. In this June Metro Police report investigating the alleged rape of an unconscious co-ed in a Vanderbilt dorm, the 22-year-old alleged victim tells police she had been drinking heavily and had little to no memory of the events that took place the night of the alleged rape. She further explains in the report she didn't think she had been sexually assaulted. She trusted Brandon Vandenberg and he would not let anything happen to her. In fact, the victim says she remained in contact with Vandenberg via text messages and had consensual sex with him a few days following the alleged rape. Police at Vanderbilt University began their investigation after surveillance video from Gillette Hall showed four men later identified as Vanderbilt football players Brandon Vandenberg, Corey Beatty, Tip McKenzie, and Brandon Banks. Police say the four were carrying a female who appeared to be passed out. The university concluded sex between Vandenberg and the victim was consensual, but that Vandenberg violated student privacy policy by videotaping the act. The district attorney says Vandy's report is not relevant in the criminal case. It's a different process, different procedure. Uh, has absolutely no bearing on the criminal case and other than uh, simply an effort to get something in front of the media and generate a little publicity for uh, both Vandenberg and his counsel, uh, it, it is, uh, it's absolutely irrelevant to the criminal case. Metro Police eventually filed rape charges against the four Vanderbilt football players. They were dismissed from the team. Their alleged victim remained in school. She's an amazing person. She's actually uh, very strong and is doing quite well. The attorney for the alleged victim wants to make sure that evidence in the case stays under wraps until trial. I would say the, uh, the most concern is that she will not be afforded her right to to dignity and compassion in the criminal justice system. The alleged victim attended classes on campus while one of the players implicated in her alleged rape attended classes too. In a Fox 17 exclusive last fall, Chris Boyd remained in school on scholarship despite his dismissal from the team. He's now pursuing a career in the NFL and his agent says he's an internship away from getting his degree at Vanderbilt. Uh, Fox 17 has, of course, been requesting more access to the police reports by Metro Police and Vanderbilt University in connection with this case so we can share with you exactly what the evidence is. Uh, those requests have been denied. It's why Fox 17 has partnered with a number of other media outlets in court action to gain access to these records under the Public Records Act. We're live at Vanderbilt. Erica Lathan, Fox 17 News.